Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner, and we are back for another episode of the Real Housewives of Orange County. And this is season 18, it's episode 14, and it's called High Tea and High Tension. And before we get into it, yes, okay, the elephant in the room. I have honestly had um, a, a pretty rough and very, very busy work week. And of course, this is the week where we have all of um, the different new housewife shows popping up at the same time. And so uh, I think I mentioned before, um, I am going to limit cam camera time in order to be able to cover all these housewife shows. But... I'm also even late in recapping The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City because, let's be real, besides me working a whole entire full-time job, I also have a life. And um, so, yeah, <laughs> you're not going to get me on camera every single time. And honestly, this week is like kind of, honestly, this week is probably like the worst week for me to be on camera full-time. Because also, I have my 50K this weekend. It's also Chicago Marathon weekend. I mean, long story lost long, there is a lot going on. Um, so anyway, without further ado, let's get into the episode. So we start off with Heather going to get a mammogram, and she actually talks to some of the ladies about doing this, you know, encouraging them, hey, you should be doing that. And I was honestly shocked that a lot of these women did not take it seriously. And I guess maybe because I don't know, I don't know what the statistics are when it comes to breast cancer, when it comes to um, white women versus, I mean, well, black women. And for black women, breast cancer, you know, especially, we're usually the ones that will get the more deadly, more severe versions of it. And we have a higher percentage and chance of doing that. And not just black women, all like all, pretty much all women of color. Um, so the fact that no one is doing like the, I, I was just confused. But anyway, with Heather's encouragement, Gina, Shannon, and um, Jen are all going to go with her. And so then um, as they're waiting in the waiting room, getting ready to go, the conversation about Shannon's text to um alexis comes up and jen informs her well informs them that basically alexis completely lost her ish and kicked her and um katie out of the house as soon as she got the news and so which is correct and honestly it kind of showed how fake um alexis is when it comes to you know, wanting to build friendships. She just really wants to be on the show. That's all it is. And honestly, I'm starting to think that Heather and Tamara want her on this show so badly that they're willing to do whatever it takes to really try to get Shannon off the show, it seems like. At least that's kind of what I saw towards the end of the episode. I'm not going to hold you. And normally, I am pretty neutral when it comes to Heather. But this episode, Heather, girl, you... Ooh, she really upset me towards the end of this episode. But anyway, so then we also find out that Alexis, of course, texts Shannon back um, and says, oh, okay, that's great that you're doing this trip, you know, with the girls, um, this nice, luxurious trip, but yet you won't find it in your way to pay um, John his 75000 and then basically Heather shuts it down. She's like, hey, we're in the hospital. Because she was getting loud. Like, Shannon was getting animated. But also, too, we have to keep remembering that Heather and Shannon, they have this weird, tumultuous relationship. And also, not only that, but, like, Heather is friends with Alexis. So she definitely has a strong bias and it's pretty clear that that's a thing, especially towards the end of the episode. Um, anyway, so moving on from that, um, the um, nurse comes back to get the mammogram started and we find out that Jen has a lump in her breast and she asks about it. And again, 
I'm shocked and shocked when I hear this, but then to make manners worse, she's had this lump in her breast for five months and never, and kept putting it off. And Lex, not Lexus. Um, wow. I'm sorry, Jen, I'm speaking directly to you. I understand life is lifing right now and you're having a lot of stress, but if you can help it, do not do anything like that ever again. Like really all of you ladies need to be getting a mammogram once a year. That's just the end of the story. That's just what it should be. Um, I think, um, Katie's probably the only one that would, would no, honestly, it's recommended now, especially if you're a person of color. Um, if you have a history, but I don't know, if, but Katie doesn't know that. And we find out later on, she doesn't know if she has a history, but, um, I think even her not knowing she has the right to go and get it done. I think once you're 35, you can start getting it done. So anyway, so going, going on from there. So one by one, the ladies are getting it done and they're getting their results. Um, Shannon was like the healthiest of everyone, even though she hadn't gotten a mammogram done in so long. Um, and she's the oldest. Uh, and then also then Gina had a little bit of a scare because of her, you know, be, it, it being the first time that she's getting it done. And um, so... And a lot of times this is very common, but she didn't know this. And I wish I would have went more into detail. A lot of times you have to get it done a second time if it's your first time, because they don't really know, especially if you're someone who's, you know, kind of in shape. So you don't know if you basically, um, if there's lymph nodes or something else. So she had to get an ultrasound to get a second opinion and turns out Gina's good. Um, Jen, it turns out that lump was literally related to plastic surgery, but I'm speaking directly to you, Jen. You probably should go to your past plastic surgeon to find out if there's anything else going on with that lump. Like, because, you know, Jen has, um, she has, um, breast implants. So, um, it's related to that. Um, and then also too, last but not least, Heather... We actually find out that she um, has breast, has dense breast tissue, and on top of just having the dense breast tissue, she has basically, I think it was, I think they said forty something percent of it, which is really, really high. So that means her chances of getting breast cancer is super high. For her age, it should only be eleven percent. So that is kind of not good um and so she's kind of freaking out considering the fact that this was her idea and one by one after the ladies you know get done they're all cheering on each other and they're asking each other how everything went they ask everyone but heather and heather is visibly hurt by this she's like wow no one even asked me about how my how things went with me and and then also you know she's keeping to herself this other news that she has and yeah it's it's, it's kind of messed up especially the way they film it initially we'll revisit this later and then you know the opinions might switch but that is how um this scene ends next we have a housewives montage and um first we see katie's talking to um kylie about um england and getting ready to go it's basically a montage of all the different women packing so then we have um emily getting packed with shang and her kids and you know this cute little scene here and then we see gina is talking about this hat she's been wanting to have an excuse to wear and she's talking to her dogs clover and meatball and then we do then actually have an actual scene with shannon and she's talking to her daughter, Sophia. Um, apparently she's in town. Um, and um, um, she's basically has Sophia brings her suitcase for her as she gets packed. And then from there, we do then see that um, her, Adeline, her other daughter, calls her. And we find out that, um, I don't remember if it was Adeline or another one of um, her daughters being in 
um, Paris at the same time she's going to be in London. So long story less long, they are going to plan on meeting up with each other in Europe. Um, so this is going to be really, really nice for Shannon because she's going to be able to see like, you know, her, her children while she's, while she's, um, celebrating her birthday. So that's cool. And, um, then from there, we then pan over to Tam Tamara getting ready with e Eddie. And then she starts to recap the tea party and basically makes fun of Jen and her reaction to Tamara apologizing. So Tamara says she tries to clear the air and Jen just, you know, her reaction was her normal dull reaction, just kind of being a bitch about it. And it's like, no, Tamara, you don't know how to freaking read a room and read someone. She, she's giving you that look because really she's saying F you. And, but she's trying to keep it classy because she's not tacky and classless like you. Anyway, um, <laughs> in the dual scene though, we see that, um, Jen is talking to, um, actually FaceTiming Ryan about the whole thing with Tamara. And Jen's basically, you know, just stating what is obvious. She's over it. And she's like, you know, she, we, she keeps trying to do this thing over and over again where she does this stuff and then apologizes, but she doesn't really mean it. And really, Jen's not gonna, not having it. And they both just like kind of bond on her calling her tacky because that's what she is. She is tacky. And then uh, back to Tamara and Eddie, they both still just keep calling Ryan a little, be like, a little bitch. And it's like, I don't understand how they don't understand the way that looks. It's not as cute as they think it is. It, it just makes them look so, they really do both look like white trash. I ain't gonna hold you. I'm not even gonna like mince words when it comes to that. It's like, what is that? But anyway, Tamara's trying to make it about her and kind of be like, well, I, you know, I will deal with her when I need to deal with her as if she, <laughs> as if Jen was the one who wronged her. And it's like ugh, the delusion. And honestly, I know I've said this a couple episodes. I really want this to be Tamara's last season. I don't. She just, it, she has no storyline. I don't know the purpose of her being on this show. Yeah, you could say it's for her to stro stro um, store, like, um, start drama, but it's forced. It's teen too much. It's overly produced. We don't need it. At, honestly, Shannon's story on its own did not need her help. It, it was going to be fine without her. But anyway. So next, we have all the ladies one by one. They are arriving at the airport. But first, before all the ladies start arriving, the first two that arrived were actually Katie and Heather. And it's just awkward because they're small. They, they small talk for like two minutes and after that, and they have nothing else to say because... You know, they're cordial, but they're never going to be friends. We know that. But then um, after that, one by one, Shannon, Tamara, Emily, Gina, and Jen show up. And then after that, in the confessional, we see Gina is doing this horrible British accent to the point where the producers asked her to stop. And I was so glad that they did because it was really bad. And I'm going to say this again. I'm very confused by um Gina's like because when Gina was doing this it just was it was extra clear that like I don't feel like Gina's from New York New York because her accent is not a New York accent it sounds like a New York accent it's like it sounds like a I don't know it sounds like a non-accent with a touch of like the Dakotas because she has she she does that no like she does a lot of that so it just, I don't know. It was weird. Anyway, then um, they all are on the plane. And then we see Emily, who is brushing her teeth on the plane. And she has a cup, like an empty cup so she could spit things out. But then we find out she doesn't have any water. So instead she uses Dr. Pepper, which was gross. And even like... Um, Katie kind of shaded her in the confessional. She's like, what in the Ohio is this? Ohio hygiene is this? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> anyway, it, it wouldn't be, uh, it, it would not be an Emily seeing if she doesn't act tacky just a little bit every so often. And honestly, 
I'm just confused on what part of Ohio she's from because it's not really an Ohio thing. Sometimes you're just, I don't know. I'm not even going to go there because she didn't, she doesn't deserve any strays. Um, <laughs> anyway, so then next, um, while they're on the plane, Heather goes on Aaron Com to say happy birthday to Shannon. And honestly, by the way, Heather did this multiple times this episode and Shannon has already shared, I think in the previous episode that she really doesn't like to have attention when it's her birthday. And Heather is doing literally the opposite of what she wants to do. And she keeps saying like, it's her birthday. And then she announces to the whole entire plane that Shannon is also single. And yeah, I would have been very upset with Heather if that was me. I would not be okay with that. If I say don't do this and don't do this, I wouldn't. I would not be okay with it. But anyway, because this, by the way, this is not the last time this happens. Um, so as they arrive, um, cause they're finally in London and they're kind of doing uh, you know, they're driving by some of the sites and, um, to get to their hotel, um, which is the Mayfair hotel, right? When they get out of their van to get to the hotel, they're, <sighs> Heather and Tam are doing it again. And honestly, when you see this, it's a little foreshadowing that is Heather and Tamara that's doing this. Um, and even the guy who is like kind of greeting them, who's kind of, I, I believe like the concierge, they're flirting with him, keeps saying like that Shannon's single. And it's just like, it's embarrassing. Are you not embarrassed? Um, anyway. So they all get set up and they have some afternoon tea um, to then draw, um, they draw um, their keys like in like a bowl and then you see who's rooming together. So Tamara and Heather are rooming together, another hint. Um, and then we have um, Katie, Jen and Emily rooming together and then Shannon and Gina are rooming together. And then, as they are all getting settled in, Shannon gets some London themed gifts. And of course, Tamara being a hater, she's all like, I don't know why she's giving me this gift when she owes this money in this lawsuit. She should save her money. Like just being really, really condescending and rude. But yeah, she kept the gift. So anyway, um, which again, tacky. Um, and then from there, we see that um, Heather also shades her and she's like, you know, instead of, I want to, I want her to give me, give, I want to return the gift to her because she really needs this to pay for her faceless, her facelift lawsuit. And I'm just like, ill. So here I'm kind of puzzled and confused what changed because out of nowhere now Heather is all of a sudden like, basically tag teaming um shannon with tamra and i'm like oh god tamra got in her ear anyway so we find out a little bit more though what actually occurred is that both heather and tamra are both irritated by um shannon's um jeff lewis interview and because she did use the word loan when she was talking about it when she was talking to Jeff Lewis. But the thing is, so the producers show this, but I don't know the full context of the conversation. And I'm not going to go back and watch a Jeff Lewis interview to find out what the context is. But I am going to give some grace when it comes to this. Because at this point, I mean, they keep saying Shan's story has changed outside of this Jeff Lewis interview. I am not seeing where her story has changed completely. I mean, maybe it has, I don't know. Maybe I'm a little biased, but also too, we do know that Shannon's kind of a hot mess. So maybe there is some truth to it that, you know, it, they've went back and forth and whether it's alone or not, but because honestly, to be truthful, why is this Tamara and Heather's business? Oh yeah, because they don't want to talk about what's going on in their actual life other than fake stuff. Um, and then other than, you know, Heather producing how her husband acts towards her on camera. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, that's why. Got it. Anyway, so then Heather then takes it upon herself to mention the one-on-one -on -one that she has had with Shannon when they're on that trip to Sedona. And 
which was kind of messy and kind of not well it wasn't kind of messy it was messy and to me it seemed like the heather that shannon came to her in confidence but to be truthful i was questioning out of all the people that shannon would go to why is she going to heather so i i i don't know i'm kind of sighing all of them to be honest but it's just for me was getting me is the timing i would be so mad if you were to ruin my birthday trip with some bs i honestly would kick you out of my trip um yeah but anyway that's neither here nor there but um of course tamra's eating up how heather is acting because she is a demon and she loves um chaos and disaster and all things are bad and um then she calls heather and then she calls him shannon a liar um and that's how that kind of ends so then next we see the ladies are heading out to the boat and shannon wants the ladies to wear the hats that she got them oh and by the way so the gifts that she got them were like burberry scarves the burberry scarves were nice but then um the union jack union jack like bucket hats um and i think they were like prada and so the ladies did not want to wear these hats and honestly if i was them i would not want to wear those hats either because by the way they're out they're out in public they're about to go on this boat and they're doing some sightseeing and it's giving like wearing that hat is saying oh yeah i'm a tourist i am not from here and that is like literally one of my worst nightmares i do not want to be somewhere and then you think i'm not from there like for real for real like i try my best for the most part to blend in when i'm at a place um so wearing obnoxious touristy looking outfits i would be no but anyway so they do they do oblige and they wear and they took take this cute picture and then they go to um this um thames um rocket boat tour and it started off nice and cute like it was kind of like a chicago architectural boat tour which by the way if you've never been to chicago i highly recommend best city ever not to be not just because i live here but also to the summers are amazing their chef's kiss and the other cool thing is we do also do like an architectural boat tour on the chicago river and one thing that we're known for are skyscrapers an amazing architect um so highly recommend it if you're ever here and you want to do something kind of touristy even someone like i've lived in chicago for now going on 10 years now and um yeah i still like doing it whenever someone is in town i always recommend it and i learn something new every single time because there's always a new skyscraper coming up but anyway that's what this was to begin with but then this is kind of like a speedboat type of situation so then as soon as they got past a certain point they just start the boat starts speeding and some of the ladies were into it but heather hated it and honestly I hate to do this but like i was kind of more on the side of emily because emily was having a blast and i would be like yes and heather is just being tightly wound like she always is and truthfully I, I i hate to call a thing a thing certain people like i like to do uppity kind of like you know nice dinners and stuff like that fine dining whatnot every so often but i do not want that to be in my life if i was to choose between hanging out with heather or emily i probably would choose hanging out with heather um and even heather kind of alluded to in her confessional she's like you know we always have to do all these fine dining things for once we're doing something i like doing <laughs> i was like you know no lies told but anyway that's that's it on that scene so next we have the ladies um they're back at the hotel and they're getting ready to go out to dinner and um we see that um tamra and um tamra's outfit was cute even though i don't like tamra her outfit was really really cute um and then um heather are getting ready but then we see that jen and katie are getting glammed up and then um emily is in the room with gina and basically states yeah they're getting glammed up and emily I, you weren't as bad about it this time around. You kind of laid low on it. But Gina, I really want you two to stop with this gin hatred or this. Because y'all are coming off as haters. 
because again they made a comment about jen getting glam even though she's having money problems and it's like so when someone's having money problems they can't have fun i understand yes the idea of utilizing and um you know spending wisely but you do have to have an entertainment balance. I mean, you do have to have an entertainment fund. And maybe she chalks off to her entertainment fund. At least for me, even when I was having my money issues, I had still had a budget for like having fun. I mean, I'm not going to pretend that I'm not going to like live a desolate life because I'm having money problems. I mean, in the United States of these Americas, most people who live here are on debt. And if everyone had that mindset, you would have never have anyone going on vacation. Um, and you also would not have um, an economy that actually, you know, is capitalist. It, it wouldn't work. Because, like, that is, honestly, that is kind of the downside of being in a capitalist society is... You're encouraged to spend. And so guess what? She That's what she's doing. She's spending. Um, I'm not going to go into like, you know, whether that's good or not. But hey, at the end of the day, let her have her glam. And honestly, if you're going to have an opinion about her glam and how she looks, Gina, I'm speaking directly to you. Your fashions and what you're wearing has to be better than what it is. It's not. So I, it's, I'm not going to listen to you about it. <laughs> <laughs> and please be the last time you talk about it anyway so then um jen and katie back at with jen and katie they talk about tamra and you know because katie's like so how are things with you and tamra and jen's like i'm over it i'm not gonna even the ship has sailed there's no going back when it comes to any of that and um katie's like so there's no way you could patch it up and she's like no absolutely not and katie unfortunately because of what happened what was said katie now has doubts in the back of her mind when it comes to ryan um because what tamra said is stuck with her especially about the fbi thing of it all um and katie <laughs> um yeah i think katie's views on it is spot on but don't be a tamra and um make it about you and or alienate alienate jen because of how you may feel about ryan you know at the end of the day this is jen's relationship let her be um but also too it, and i guess for me because i've been in a similar situation where i felt a way about a friend's relationship with a significant other I actually ended up breaking up with a friend completely because of that but my issue was if you're going to be with a certain person do not talk to me and vent to me about the the bad because you're not i already feel a way about the person i'm gonna feel worse and my ex-friend would do that but then yet stay with them so i would just always look at her like she was crazy and with jen we don't see that with her she kind of really tries to keep that to herself like she tries to keep her her relationship with ryan and her to herself for the most part the only times on this show where it really came up is when tamra brought when tamra has brought it up truthfully um anyway oh and then also too before they go out you do see this little cute scene of gina and emily um with shannon she's trying to do her hair and tease it and it is an epic fail so they just they they head out to dinner <laughs> So um, they arrive at this place called the Londoner and they are doing like a five course meal. And again, like I said, sometimes we're going to do some outdoorsy fun stuff, but other times we like to be bougie. So this is, yeah, I'm also into this as well. So far I am liking um, Shannon's trip. Anyway, so then Tamara, by the way, for the rest of this episode, Tamara was just being such a freaking producer it was annoying it was obnoxious it was which is why i wanted to be her last season because not once does she ever talk about herself by the way but anyway so then she asked about the mammogram stuff because she knew she knew that heather had an issue so this is why she's bringing it up for heather um but she uses the excuse that gina was talking to her, talking to her and emily about it earlier so they do show a previous thing of that's what happened and then um heather 
um, right away basically states that she was hurt that no one asked about her results. And, but they show us, they go back to the scene and show exactly why they didn't. And it changed my mind on this. So as they're waiting, the women are waiting for everyone to get their results. You see, you hear Heather saying, yay, but there's no context to it. And so Shannon, both Shannon and Jen thought she was saying yay about herself and her getting, you know, great results. It turns out though, she was saying that for Gina. She heard Gina's results and she said yay for her. But so they, they assume. So literally it was just miscommunication. But then they do talk more about it. And we do find out that Heather has a 40% chance of getting breast cancer, which is a lot. And they're all kind of freaking out and stuff. And then Heather in her confessionals breaking down about how no one cared. But yet they literally are all right there in her face showing concern that they care. So Heather, this is a reach. I'm sorry, but this is a reach. She's doing too much. And then Gina... Um, Gina, again, she also reaches too. She's confused about why Heather waited so long to say something just to her about it, not to everyone who was there, but to her specifically. And then we see the producers pan back to Heather scolding her about waiting so long about it. And it's just like, and you know, basically Gina calls, is trying to call Heather a hypocrite, but is it hypocritical? You be the judge. I think it's a little yes, a little no. I think for those who don't like Gina, you're not going to see it. And for those who are indifferent towards Gina and or um, don't really like Heather, you're going to be like, yes, hypocritical. I, I don't think I really have an opinion on it because I kind of don't care. <laughs> I'll just be honest. Anyway. So oh, after Heather kind of vents and talks about it, we then do find out that um, Katie shares with the ladies like, you know, hey, I just I kind of wish I just knew if I have a chance of breast cancer or not, because, you know, she's adopted. So she doesn't have any, you know, health history. Um, basically, the circumstances of how she was adopted. We actually then in the scene find out exactly how she was adopted. Her mom is only in her 50s, by the way, and, um, you know, Katie's in her, like, mid-30s. So her mom had her when she was 15 years old, and she was working in a factory in South Korea and basically almost gave birth to her while she was working in the factory. And um, we find out, though, that Katie um, and her mom were together for three days, and her mom decided she couldn't do it, and uh, you know, and got got her to get adopted and katie does share also in this scene that she's actually not mad at her mom for making that decision she's actually grateful for her mom making that decision because of the life that she did end up having she wouldn't have had those same opportunities if you know her mom would have kept her so she wants to talk she wants when she goes to see her mom because she also does share with the ladies that she's going to see her mom in april um her birth mom, she wants to thank her. So that's cool that we learned that. Um, hopefully we actually get to see that because I do want to see that. But anyway, so then um, Emily is just kind of making it known and kind of like, oh, wow, you and you and Heather actually are talking to each other. And um, Katie's like, yeah, it's not that hard to talk to her. I could be cordial, like in her confessional. And then Heather shades her and it's just like, oh God. So honestly, I really, really am over Heather this season. I normally like Heather, but I think Heather is doing too much when it comes to this Katie situation. Katie already owned what she did and Heather just wants to keep the grudge. And it's really, really annoying. Um, and then from there, out of left field, then you have Tamara asking Shannon about the lawsuit at her, at the tr on her trip, and it's really annoying. And of course, it's getting um, Shannon worked up. Um, and then Shannon mentions something about a promissory note because they're questioning. Basically, Heather and Tamara are questioning Shannon 
you know, whether this was truly a loan or not. And um, Shannon mentions a promissory note. And I'm like, girl. And so now some of the ladies are just like, I don't know now. And um, really, Emily is being careful about how she puts things because I think because she's an attorney, she's keeping keeping things, you know, to herself on how she thinks about it. Um, because also the, the key is if it's not in writing, anything else is in writing, then it's going to be hard to tell. Um, because according to Shannon, the promissory note came about after the fact. Um, so anyway, from there, then Heather, Miss Heather Dubrow, um, who prides herself in not being tacky, does a tacky thing and shares with the whole entire table the conversation that her and Shannon had in Sodoma, um, which was, and, you know, then makes it about her and says she's she feels used. And yes, I'm sorry, I do agree with Shannon, um, at least when it comes to Heather making it about her. Because she is making it about her. But... <laughs> I'm not sure if Heather is wrong because I did, if you go back to my review, I was questioning why is she talking to Heather about this? I was confused about it. I think other reviewers were also confused. So interesting. Anyway, so then they're basically double teaming Shannon at this point and, um, Jen chimes in. She's like, this is too much. Like, why would you think she would do all that? And then Tamara basically does her antics as she's been doing and just attacks, attacks, attacks to the point where Shannon leaves her own dinner. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Honestly, Tamara be picking the right people because if it was me, Tamara would have been left crying. It would never be. I, you're, I ref, no one's going to make me leave my shit. <laughs> I'm just going to say that right away. No one will ever make me leave my thing. Ever, 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 and ever. So anyway, um, that does happen. But then Gina goes after her. And Tamara's still barking. I'm not even listening to whatever Tamara's saying. Because to me, it just comes off like she's barking. I don't even care. And... Um, which, you know, it kind of actually revalidates the point that she, Tamara really was never Shannon's friend and does not care for Shannon ever. And because she's so two-faced that she's friends of, friends of no one. And to me, it gets me how Heather will always pick Tamara's side when it comes to things. Because it's like, girl, do you see what she's doing with all the other women? Maybe Heather and Tamara have an agreement where they won't attack each other. But Tamara be breaking those agreements all the time. So Heather, if I were you, I would keep my good eye open and I would not, I would not do as much as what you tried to do. Um, but anyway, um, so while Shannon is being consoled by Gina, Shannon actually shows some receipts and breaks some tea. Um, speaking of the irony of it all. <laughs> and we find out according to shannon that if it wasn't for um alexis texting her back she would have never found out that Ale that she actually has proof that alexis did sue her the very first time when her ex-husband and her sued her and for those who are like i feel like that's like the most obvious thing but like Tamara's denying it and then when Shannon shared this information with Tamara Tamara has you know responds back like oh yeah I forgot like she only texts you not me so Tamara is caught red-handed basically agreeing and co-signing with Shannon so Shannon was right the whole entire time about Alexis suing um Shannon and Shannon from the beginning if you watch the first episode that was her main beef with with Alexis it wasn't about the John Jansen of it all it became about that but it was mainly about this chick so sued me um and she never forgave her for that and really 
who knows why Tamara forgave her. It isn't for the right reasons. We know that. Um, I think it was really just a take down Shannon because Tamara just wants a reason to take down Shannon. Um, and Heather wants to take down Shannon too. I think that's what it is too, because Shannon's like kind of the last of like the, um, I guess established housewife that is the OG. Cause then that would leave really like Heather and Tamara left. Um, cause, but Tamara left for like, I think a couple, like three seasons or whatever. I don't know. I didn't really miss Tamara when she was gone. Cause I actually started watching the show after Tamara was gone, but that's neither here nor there anyway. So that was where the episode ended is those receipts being dropped and Gina's like, wow, so Alexis was a real liar. And I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, that does conclude the episode. Um, it was a decent episode. Um, again, this has been a really, really good housewife show. Um, the, so after this show, I will be then reviewing the real housewives of Salt Lake city. I know I did not do that in order, but like, um, I've been watching, trying to watch the shows live. So I'm going to go back and watch um, Salt Lake City on Peacock, which I will. No big deal. But anyway, that does conclude the review. Um, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melanin Stout Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.